Hey guys, Thunder E here, and I've got a fun laptop video for you. This time, we're doing a comparison between Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, and Apple to find out who has the best processor out there for your laptops. So before we begin, let's just check them out. So 2024 has been a great year for laptops with the launch of uh, chips from Qualcomm with the Snapdragon X Elite, a uh, brand new chip from Intel with Intel Core Ultra Series 2, a new AMD chipset as well uh, with the Ryzen AI chipset, the HX chipset, and the MacBook M3 chipset. So we've got a lot of options as uh, consumers, but how do they perform? So in this video, I'm gonna do a breakdown for you where we will look at the laptops in different segments. Now, the first segment, of course, will be benchmarks, and we'll look at benchmarks from Geekbench, as well as also Cinebench R23. And then we're also gonna be looking at battery life tests. Now, I did my battery life test with a software called Procyon, which should give you an idea of what it does in battery life performance for all the devices. And then finally, we'll take a look at gaming. Now, guys, this is not scientific. Don't hold me down to this. I haven't tested every single laptop. So let's take a look at all the laptops we have here. The first is the HP Omnibook Ultra Flip 14. Now this is an Intel um, Core Ultra Laptop Series 2. It's priced at 1,599. You can see the specs and screens for all the laptops and it's got a 64 watt hour battery. Now our next laptop is the ASUS ZenBook S14. This is also an Intel Core Ultra processor, Core Ultra 7 Series 2. Price at 1,499, and this comes with a 72 watt hour battery. Our next laptop is the ASUS ZenBook S16 with the AMD Ryzen 9 AI. It's priced at 1,699, and it comes with the largest battery at 78 watt hours. Now, our next laptop is the ASUS VivoBook S15. This is the Copilot PC uh, laptop, priced at 899 currently and it comes with a 70 watt hour battery and this app has the Snapdragon X Elite chipset in there. After that, we have the Lenovo Yogurt 7X Copilot PC, also come with the Snapdragon X Elite. It is priced at 1,099 um, or some places 999 with a 70 watt hour battery. Next up is the MacBook Air 15 M3. This is priced at 1,299. And rumor says it has a 66.5 watt hour battery. Apple doesn't list it, you guys know that. But that's what we have in there. And then next, our seventh laptop is the Lenovo Yoga 7i Aura Edition. This is the Intel Core Ultra 7 Series 2, um, Series 2 laptop. It's priced at 1,279, and it also comes with a 70 watt hour battery. And our last laptop is the giant Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 a 16 inch laptop uh, with the Intel Core Ultra 7 Series 2 and also comes with a 76 watt hour battery and is priced at 1,699. Whew, that is a lot of laptops. So what we have here are laptops that of course can do your daily needs. Now we're not gonna be comparing operating systems uh, like Mac or Windows, but we take a look at our benchmark numbers and see what we have. So starting off with Cinebench R23. Looking at our single core scores for Cinebench R23, you can clearly see that the best score here is with the Lenovo Yogo 7i R Edition, which is an Intel Core Ultra chipset, and it uh, comes in at a 1923, 1923, which is pretty good. Now, our second place is the MacBook, third place is the Asus ZenBook S14, while the two lowest scores are attached to both the Asus VivoBook S15 and the Yoga 7X uh, Copilot PC. So Qualcomm has the lowest scores here, Intel does, and AMD is kinda in the middle. Well, that's just single core scores for Cinebench. Now let's look at multi-core scores. Now multi-core scores take a completely different tone. AMD has the highest score here at 14,145, which is massively impressive here, with the second highest score going to the Yoga uh, 7X Copilot PC, and then the MacBook. So again, the numbers have changed here, which leads me to believe that most of these laptops will have some very differentiating scores across the board. While Intel kind of has the lowest lower scores here, with the lowest scores going to the ASUS ZenBook S14. 
which is the Intel chip. Now, when we move to Geekbench, we see some very completely different numbers. In Geekbench here, uh, with our single core scores, the MacBook clearly clears everybody else with the highest score available, then followed by Intel and then followed by Qualcomm. So MacBook here clearly wins here in single core and Geekbench, while the other companies are actually a tail behind. Now, when it comes to multi-core scores, the ASUS VivoBook S15, which is the Qualcomm chipset, has the best score here at 14,127, with the MacBook coming in second, and then the Lenovo Yoga Aura Edition coming in third. So, as you can see, these benchmark numbers are kind of all over the place, which means, to me at least, these laptops are in some really good competition with each other. Some are lower, some are, are higher, and that depends on the manufacturer. What you will see though is that at least the MacBook is more consistent because that is made by more manufacturer, which is Apple. So you're gonna see some at least more consistent numbers across the board. While on Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm, there'll be varying numbers because different manufacturers, different uh, laptop settings, you get the idea there. And that's how it kind of runs out in that in that scenario. But what does that mean for actual performance? Now, I decided to do performance slightly differently here. And for me, it's gaming. And most of you are not gonna like this. I took out the MacBook for gaming and I took out the Qualcomm laptops for gaming simply because with the MacBook, I don't have enough games that I can do across the board compatibility wise on the MacBook, but the MacBook can still play games and we've seen that there. Definitely check that video out. While on the Qualcomm side, I had issues playing a lot of games. I had some drivers issues and also some compatibility issues, of course, with game cheat codes. So that is not ready for prime time. So this is basically a battle between Intel and a very good one because it's between the same product line, the ZenBook S14, which is an Intel powered chipset and the ZenBook S16, which is an AMD powered chipset. We can actually see a comparison here. We've played Street Fighter VI, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and uh, finally Doom Eternal. With Street Fighter VI, I was able to play the Intel machine on battery without any charge, 1080p 60 frames per second at the highest settings possible, which was impressive. And compared to AMD, I was able to play at 720p, almost the highest settings, um, and I was getting between 55 to 60 frames per second. So the Intel chipset can play Street Fighter VI at a higher resolution at 1080p. Moving over to Doom Eternal, here we're able to see that the Intel chipset, I was able to play that at um, medium settings and getting between 45 to 75 frames per second, similar to the AMD here. So, I, and you look at both settings for both, they actually play quite similar. So with, with Doom Eternal, similar gameplay from both devices. And finally, of course, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. On both devices, I set them at low settings and lower settings. So the Intel was set at lower settings and it played at 1080p, I was able to get between 66 all the way up to 75 frames per second, while the AMD chipset was played at low setting, which is a higher setting. I was able to get the same frame rate, so AMD handled that well. So what you see here, games again will have the same kind of back and forth with performance because some work better than the others, but gives you an idea of where the performance lands and it shows that both devices are very similar, at least the chipset, in terms of gameplay performance. So let's move on to our very last segment, which is battery life. Battery life. So usually with battery life, the MacBook has done a really good job over the years, we've seen that, and you expect it to win this battery life battle, but that's not the case. Our winner here is the Lenovo Yoga Aura Edition. Now, this comes in at 19 hours and 13 minutes, while the third best is the Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 at 16 hours and 42 minutes. And then we have the Yoga, a 7X Copilot PC at 16 hours and three minutes. The MacBook coming in fourth, and it kind of just trails down from there. But what is quite interesting is that both Yogas have a 70 watt hour battery. The Intel version, which won, um, had 19 hours, while the Qualcomm version had 16 hours and coming in third. Now, the Galaxy Book had a 76 watt hour battery, while the MacBook had a 66.5 watt hour battery, which is impressive. And to me, that actually shows that the MacBook is pretty much efficient with the way it uses the battery to actually move forward. And the Intel uh, Core Ultra does a really good job with a sizable battery to give it huge lead. So what does this all mean for you? Well, it means that if you're a PC user, you should be excited. There are laptops there that have some really good performance, um, uh, whether it's uh, with Intel, AMD, or Qualcomm. 
and it can be a very mixed view. Now, when you look at benchmarks out there and some people say this is better than others, it's model. You have to look at what works for you. And right now, if I look at every single category, I set the MacBook aside because that also is an operating system love. If you love it, you can go with that and it works really well. But in terms of the Windows ecosystem, right now, I think the Intel Core Ultra Series 2 is the best chipset right now, just because it has the highest battery life. It also has high benchmark numbers and I can game, light game on the road quite effectively. I think the Qualcomm chipset is probably the best bang for your buck because pricing wise, you're looking at stuff at either a thousand or sub a thousand with great battery life, also great performance. And you can still use it on a day-to-day -day basis with some app compatibility issues, which hopefully should improve. AMD is on more in the middle uh, with some really great performance and power, but a lot of power packed into that, as you can see with the Geekbench score. So hopefully this gives you an idea that as a PC user, you now have options and you can pick devices that fit your needs and your price point. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, or you think my whole benchmarks were completely bullshit, go ahead and run your own. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and enjoy your entertainment.